Prior to the development of the monocoque, wherein the body and frame of a car travel down the production line as a single unit, the primary method of early automobile construction was through the use of a separate chassis, atop which was fitted coachwork that was commissioned from a coach-building firm, a carryover from a time before motorised vehicles, which was peppered with distinguished names that had provided bodies for regal carriages for over a century. Among these names was Van den Pla, one of the longest and last surviving coach-building firms, which, through an evolution of its craft, managed to survive the mass extinction of coach-building companies during the 1950s and 60s and continued to see its name appear on modern cars right up until 2009. While horse-drawn wagon building as a trade has existed since a time beyond known record in ancient history, coach building itself wasn't incorporated until 1677 after a near 50-year petition by tradesmen of the time, who demanded that the art of coach making and wheelwrights be considered a livery company, this petition granted by Royal Charter to create the worshipful company of coachmakers and coach harness makers, from which dozens of individual coachmakers rapidly emerged to provide bodies and wheels for carriages and coaches used in public service, such as the stagecoach, and for private owners including the established gentry and royalty. The story of Van den Pla begins in Brussels, Belgium in 1870, and was founded by blacksmith Guillaume Van den Pla, and his three sons Antoine, Henri and Willy, who had initially produced axles for horse-drawn carriages, the success of their venture allowing them, by 1884, to move the company headquarters to Antwerp while opening branches in Paris and Brussels, the company having expanded to a workforce of 400 men, producing 300 special bodies per year by 1908. In 1906, the Van den Pla name first appeared in Great Britain as the provider of bodywork for cars of the Metallurgique brand, a Belgian automaker based out of Marchien au Pont, and in 1913, the firm established an English branch through dealerships operated by Warwick Wright, a London-based sales agent, building bodies under licence from Van den Pla, Belgium. In World War I, Van den Pla's UK operations were switched to aircraft production, and the firm was purchased by the Aircraft Manufacturing Company of Hendon, incorporating Van den Pla Limited in 1917, but due to the suspension of its coach-building work, the Van den Pla company struggled to regain its footing during the post-war era and in 1922 fell into receivership, although it did survive in France until 1934, while the final use of the Van den Pla name under its original Belgian firm was in 1949. Van den Pla didn't stay dormant for long in the UK, though, as former manager of the firm, Edwin Fox, combined his own capital with that of his two brothers, Alfred and Frank, to acquire the mark and restart the company in 1923, with Alfred as chairman and Edwin as managing director moving from their works at Hendon to a new factory at Kingsbury in northwest London, while taking their first orders for bespoke coachwork from Bentley, supplying over 700 bodies for the company's many models, including the famous Bentley 6.5 litre, between 1924 and the company's collapse and subsequent acquisition by Rolls-Royce in 1931. In 1940, Edwin Fox's son, Roland, took over as production engineer before rising to works director during World War II, and alongside the company's car-building activities, had also formed an association with de Havilland during the 1930s, taking on work for the emerging aircraft industry and later making a valuable contribution to the war effort, although the company once again faced financial ruin in the period immediately after the end of the war due to steel rations, meaning there was little to no demand for coach-built luxury cars, attempts to sign a contract with Rolls-Royce in late 1945 subsequently failing and leaving Van den Pla with little to no work. Instead, hope came from the unlikely location of Austin, when the company's chairman, Leonard Lord, made Van den Plaa an offer of £90,000, or £3.8 million in 2021, in 1946, to supply coachwork for Austin's upcoming six-cylinder chassis, with Fox accepting his offer, and thereby making the Van den Plaa firm a subsidiary of Lord's ever-increasing automotive empire, with Lord himself taking over as chairman and managing director, while Edwin and Roland Fox became directors, along with Austin's George Harriman. The first Austin car to carry Van den Pla coachwork was the A120 Princess of 1947, the most expensive flagship model in the Austin range, and from then on, Austin and Van den Pla would cooperate in the ongoing evolution of this model throughout the late 1940s and into the 1950s, both in terms of mechanical upgrades, such as an increased engine size from 3.5 to 4 litres, but also the provision of a long wheelbase version of the car from 1952, this model being an extremely popular alternative to contemporary Rolls-Royce, Bentley and Daimler products and found a home with royalty and heads of state across the globe. In 1958, based on the success of the Princess, Lord chose to expand Van den Pla's role within the company lineup, 
by sending a contingent of 500 Austin A105 Westminster saloons to the Kingsbury plant for a full internal upgrade to the highest possible luxury. This decision being influenced by a rapid demand for higher trim level specifications in regular saloon cars during the late 1950s that allowed for regular working families the opportunity to enjoy luxury motoring, but not at Rolls-Royce prices. The Austin A105 Vanden Pla would become the first mass production car to be upgraded by the Vanden Pla company, and with it came huge success that would see the coach builder be called upon to develop top of the range luxury models for future versions of Austin's regular family cars. The A105 being followed in 1959 by the Farina Saloon, based on the Princess 3 litre, with distinctive new front end styling devised by Roland Fox himself. Going from strength to strength, Vanden Pla was launched as its own brand in 1960 under Lord's overarching car making company, the British Motor Corporation, which included both Austin and Vanden Pla, but also former rivals Morris, MG, Riley, and Wolseley. The reputation of Vanden Pla for providing bespoke, high-end luxury versions of the company's saloon cars, allowing it to hold the same appeal as established car builders like Rolls-Royce and Daimler, giving rise to three models in a hierarchy similar to that of other motoring firms. The Princess 1100, a small family car based on the highly successful Austin 1100, the Vanden Pla Princess 4 litre, which was based off the mid-range Austin A110 Westminster, and the Vanden Pla Princess 4 litre limousine, a continuation of the original Princess of 1947, now exclusively in long wheelbase form. This arrangement would last until June 2nd, 1967, when Vanden Pla, as the company established in 1923, was merged fully into the ranks of the newly formed British Motor Holdings as the Vanden Pla division of the wider BMH firm, with intentions being, following the acquisition of the Jaguar Daimler Company in 1966 to form British Motor Holdings, that a brand new limousine model, based on the underpinnings of the Jaguar 420 saloon, would replace both the current Daimler and Vanden Pla luxury models from 1968 this car becoming the Daimler DS420. While Vanden Pla lost its own brand of cars, the company was still contracted to provide luxury coachwork for the DS420, the body shells being initially constructed by Park Sheet Metals of Coventry, before final assembly and furnishing of the cars was undertaken at Kingsbury, the bare metal shells being phosphate coated, bituminous sealed, baked, primed, and finished painted to the highest quality before being internally trimmed and fitted with their 4.2-litre Jaguar XK straight-six power plants. As the DS420 entered sales, British Motor Holdings merged with the Leyland Group and Rover to form British Leyland during 1968, and the Vanden Pla company saw its range of models trimmed down to just two cars, the aforementioned DS420 and the Austin 1100-based Princess 1300 small family car, although the future seemed bright as discussions between Roland Fox, and Jaguar's upcoming chairman, Frank Lofty England, brought to fruition a new flagship for the Daimler mark in the form of the XJ6-based Daimler 66 Vanden Pla of 1972, the first time the Vanden Pla name had been applied to a Daimler, and held an original retail price at the very top of Daimler's range, costing £6,067, or £81,865 in 2021, double the price of the Daimler DS420 limousine. The Series 1 Daimler 66 Vanden Pla was an incredible first step for the company under British Leyland, as the mixture of its handcrafted coachwork and interior, combined with its smooth V12 engine, meant it not only presented a viable competitor to ultra-luxury Maybach variants of the Mercedes-Benz W123, but also the Rolls-Royce Silver Shadow and Corniche, and with the firm now seeing its second major spike in popularity, in association with the Daimler Mark, the Austin Morris Group formally transferred the division to Jaguar Cars Limited in 1974. This wasn't the end of Vanden Pla's association with Austin, though, as during that same year, the still popular but forlorn Princess 1300, the last model to carry the Vanden Pla princess name, was discontinued, and instead replaced by a new Vanden Pla variant of the company's new small car, the Austin Allegro of 1973. The rationale for continuing the sale of Vanden Pla variants of Austin's regular models being that the 1300 princess remained a steady income for the firm right up until the end of production the hope being that an Allegro-based replacement would be able to replicate this success. Launched in the summer of 1974, alongside the revised Mark II Allegro, the Vanden Pla 1500 had been delivered on a very tight budget due to the overall losses being incurred by the wider British Leyland Company, with stipulations being that externally, Vanden Pla could only alter one panel for the restyling process, their choice being to fit the car with a large chrome grille and a reworked bonnet to match the change in this profile. At the same time, proposals were also made to create a Vanden Pla version of the company's new large family car, 
the Austin and Morris 2200, later to be known as the Leyland Princess, the concept again being to refurbish the interior, while styling changes externally would be restricted to merely the bonnet and grille, but before a 2200-based Vanden Pla variant could enter production, the continuing collapse of British Leyland financially, as outlined in the Ryder Report, meant this prospective model was killed off after only one prototype. With regard to the Vanden Pla 1500, though the car sported walnut trim, leather upholstery and soft Wilton carpets, the external changes to the car's front were not viewed favourably, the large grille and changes to the bonnet being lambasted by customers and motoring critics as they failed to suit the car's profile, but regardless, the car remained a steady seller throughout the late 1970s, and would continue in production alongside the regular Allegro until 1979, when sales of the Vanden Pla 1500 and later 1700 weren't enough to justify an upgraded version in line with the facelifted Mark III Allegro of that year. In 1979, as part of the rationalisation of the British Leyland firm following its bankruptcy in 1975, the Kingsbury plant in North London was closed after 56 years of operation, with the continued production of the DS420 and Daimler 66 models being undertaken at Jaguar's Browns Lane plant, while the final Vanden Pla 1500s and 1700s were built at MG's Abingdon Works. From now on, the Vanden Pla name would simply be used for marketing purposes on ultra-luxury variants of British Leyland's regular models, the remit of their modifications being entirely to the interior of cars, including the Rover ST1, the Austin Maestro, the Austin Montego, the Rover 200, and even the Austin Metro City car, while elsewhere, in order to avoid confusion with the Daimler-Benz mark of Germany, marketing for Jaguar and Daimler models in the United States continued to go under the Jaguar Vanden Pla name. The end for Vanden Pla eventually came during the breakup of British Leyland during the mid to late 1980s, with the sale of Jaguar and Daimler into the private sector in 1984, meaning the Vanden Pla name was dropped from their marketing. While, as new models were brought in to replace former British Leyland cars like the Rover SD1 and the original Rover 200, the Vanden Pla brand was slowly removed from circulation, the last car to carry the Vanden Pla name being the Rover 213-216 range, which discontinued the use of this mark when a facelifted Rover 200 was launched in 1989. This isn't entirely the end of the story for Vanden Pla though, as in early 2002, the mark was revived briefly by MG Rover as a special flagship model for the Rover 75, this car being dubbed the Rover 75 Connoisseur Vanden Pla Long Wheelbase, which was converted by specialist coach builders S. McNeil & Son of Walsall to have a 200mm wheelbase extension over the standard saloon in order to improve rear legroom and included the finest luxury fittings available for the time, including leather trim and early satellite navigation. Sadly, the Vanden Pla mark on this new car would be very short-lived, as only a few months after the car's launch, the Vanden Pla titles were dropped, and the car was instead marketed as the Rover 75 Long Wheelbase, and later, from 2004, as the Rover 75 Limousine, this model lasting until the end of the MG Rover Company in 2005. During this period, the Vanden Pla name was also revived on Jaguar models from 2001, when, to once again avoid confusion as to the Daimler mark on the US market, models that would otherwise be named the Daimler Sovereign or Super 8 in other markets were sold as the Jaguar XJ8 Vanden Pla in America at a cost of $80,000, this marketing exercise continuing until the end of 2009, where, as part of a comprehensive restyling of the XJ range, the Daimler mark would be dropped entirely thus requiring no further use of the Vanden Pla brand on Jaguar models, thereby bringing a final end to Vanden Pla after 139 years of history.